Hello everybody. Well, today in this video I wanted to talk about the Silver Reed FC6 Fair Isle carriage for the LK140 and LK150 knitting machines. Now this was also branded as the um, 2300, SK2300, and that was actually a model of machine that this carriage came as standard with. Um, it was very much like the LK150, but instead of coming with the standard carriage that the 150 comes with, it came with this one. But for the LK140 and LK150, the FC6 was an accessory um, that enabled you to knit um, Fair Isle very easily because it had this twin yarn feeder here. Now let's talk a little bit about this yarn feeder first, and then we'll talk about how this carriage actually works. Now before I talk about how the FC6 carriage works, I thought I would first start by talking about the similarities between the two carriages. Now first of all we'll talk about the yarn feeders. So you'll notice that they both have, we well, probably can't see actually, but there's a number one and a number two feeder on both carriages, but they both perform different functions on each carriage and um, neither of them will perform the same function on opposite carriages. So the interesting thing to note is on the regular 150 carriage, the number one feeder is the front feeder in the carriage, whereas on the FC6, the number one feeder is the one behind at the back. The number two feeder is the back feeder on the regular 150 carriage, and in contrast, no pun intended, the number two feeder is at the front. So they're the opposite way around but the feeders don't perform the same functions on either carriage. On the regular 150 carriage, the number two feeder is used for a technique or a method of knitting called plating. And that's to knit two yarns together. You usually use a light, two lightweight yarns and use uh, double the stitch size that you would normally use for the individual yarns. Um, so you would thread one of them in feeder one and the other one in feeder two, the, the back feeder. And these two yarns would knit together and they would have a different yarn on each face. The uh, yarn in the number one feeder shows on the purl side of the fabric and the yarn on the number two feeder will show on the knit side. Um, and that uh, plating technique is useful for, for instance, you want to use a yarn that's um, quite scratchy next to your skin. So you would plate like a smooth cotton um, to knit on the back side so that you would um, have a fabric that's much much more wearable. Now the FC6 carriage, the number one feeder as I said is at the back and just like the number one feeder on the main 150 carriage that is used for one colour knitting. The number two feeder on the FC6 is for knitting a contrast yarn for a fair isle technique and um, the number one feeder knits needles in B position and the yarn in the number two feeder knits needles in D position. So those are the yarn feeders. Now let's have a look at the tops of the carriages. You'll see that they both have two sets of levers, a tension dial, but in addition, the FC6 has this lever here. You have naught and F, or O and F. Um, F is used for fair isle, and O is just used for all your other plain knitting, tuck stitch, that sort of thing. Now, when the FC6 is set on the O or zero position, the feeders, uh, sorry, the levers on the carriage operate exactly the same as they do on the main carriage. The Russell levers at the front here, when set on one on both carriages, will hold needles in D position. When they're set on two, they will knit needles back from D position. And uh, again, the side levers, when set on the black dot, they will um, skip or slip needles in the um, B position. And when set on the triangle mark, they will knit the needles in B position. The tension dials are exactly the same. You have R on the um, regular 150 carriage, and you also have R on the Fair Isle FC6 and again it goes up to 9 on the FC6 
just the same as the 150 carriage and that's for knitting on every needle and on both carriages you can have it on between 10 and 13 for knitting on every other needle now here's where things start differing when the fc6 is set on f for fair oil these russell levers will not hold needles when set to one they will in fact knit needles selected into d position so when you have the b position needles here have this set on F, the Russell lever set on one, the yarn in feeder two will knit these D position needles and the yarn in feeder one will knit the B position needles. So if I take the carriage off here and show you the underside I can show you how this works. So here's a close up and I've got my single prong transfer tool. So the B position needles come in here and they travel around here, push one of those guides out of the way and follow the path up there and then they pop out the other side there. When you have the uh, fair aisle switch set into place, these spring loaded fingers pop out these cams and the D position needles will travel along here. We'll go the same route so I don't confuse you. So your B position needles just travelled through here. Our D position needles are coming in through here now. It pushes down on here, which in turn sends it up this direction here and then back out in the same alignments as where the B position needles came from. So essentially what's going on here is that it's um, the needles are taking the same path but at slightly different times which enables the D position needles to stay out forward longer to catch the yarn in the front feeder, feeder two. And the needles in B position are knitted back first, which enables it to catch the yarn in feeder one, the back feeder. So it's pretty simple how it works. So when I set the fair eye lever to the zero, these spring loaded cams pop back in so that when we use the holding position, the needles can just glide over that and um, it doesn't send them into the cam section of the carriage which is why when we have it set on zero we can use the hold position because this is just flat now all along here just like it is on the main carriage and you would have these set on one the needles will just follow straight across so that's why we, we can't use the holding position with the lever set on fair aisle to hold um, stitches with the fair aisle carriage you would actually have to knit them back on ravel cord right back to non-working position or take them off onto waste yarn. You still have the brushes on the underside, some people actually change these for rubber wheels on the standard carriage, though on the FC6 there are some little rubber wheels under there anyway, little um, sort of cogged rubber wheels. Obviously you have your magnets as standard and uh, your carriage release lever there. Um, so of course the FC6 is no longer in production. Um, it's pretty rare and if you can get your hands on one it's definitely worth getting hold of one because it's just a really cool thing to have. So these were the three carriages that the LK150 had available. There was the standard carriage that came with the machine there was the FC6 Fair Isle carriage and the AG11, originally AG10, Intarsia carriage. Obviously there's no yarn feeder on the Intarsia carriage because the yarns are laid across the needles and not fed to the needles via a yarn feeder. That's what enables you to knit several different colours in Intarsia because you can lay different um, bobbins of different colours all across the row and make um, pictures, which is also why they call it picture knitting. So before I show you the Fair Isle, I'll show you some standard plain knitting with this Fair Isle carriage, the FC6. And um, you can use it in the same way as the standard carriage. Now I'm going to work over a width of 40 needles. So I'm going to select 20 to the left of zero and 20 to the right of zero, centering the knitting on the bed of the machine. 
And initially I'll just select every other needle for the first row of the cast on of this particular cast on, which is known as a weaving cast on. My tension is set at four. I'll thread the main yarn, which is this gray, into feeder one, and I'll knit the first row. I'm gonna hang the cast on comb. Make sure you center it. Catch the yarn just by one tooth. Don't let it be trapped by all of them. Make sure it's hanging level. You can put a weight on there if you want. And I'm gonna bring all the alternate needles into working position. So all 40 needles are in B position where they can begin knitting. You could set the row counter to zero because this is the start of the actual knitting. You can see I have a nice stockinette forming there and it works just the same as the regular carriage and with it set on the zero position you could put the Russell levers to one and um, for instance knit a tuck stitch use it in the same way as the standard carriage don't want that one though and um, the side levers are set at the triangle mark And you see we do have a holding position function here. I'm going to push those back to forward working position or B position. Uh, sorry, C position. I'm used to brother machines. And um, I'll make a next selection. And we're making a tuck stitch here. Make the next selection and just keep right on knitting. I've finished my tuck pattern here for this sample and um, I'm just going to set the Russell lever to two, the leading Russell lever here, and that will knit these D position needles back to B position. And there we can see the overall tucked pattern that's formed there. So you can use it in the same way for single colour knitting as the standard carriage. So I've knitted a few more rows here in just some plain knitting. Again, there's that tuck stitch again, if you wanted to see how that looked. Just a basic pattern that every fourth needle, knit three rows, push them back, select the centre group of three, knit another three rows and repeat. Um, but now I've knitted another few rows, I'm going to start doing some fair isle. And this is the pattern I'm going to show you. I thought I could do something just basic like every other needle and then doing the opposite on the next row, but that's too easy and boring. You probably want to learn how to do something when you're manually selecting stitches uh, a bit more interesting. So I found this um, out the Brother KH270 um, pattern book. It's um, pattern number 51 and that's what the design looks like. And this is the chart. You can see that. Now this chart is 16 stitches wide. And if you want to, you could just select the needles either from the left or the right side and work your way along and keep repeating this pattern. Um, and that's fine but for straight pieces, but when you start doing sleeves or things that have got shaping in it, um, you're going to find it difficult to maintain where you're up to because as the piece starts either getting wider or narrower, um, you're going to find it difficult to figure out where you are in the pattern, especially if it's an ever-changing pattern. Every row is different. Um, so you're probably going to want to centre it on the needle bed. So this, as I said, is 16 stitches wide. So we're going to put it from 8 to the left, 8 to the right, and then it will repeat each side from there. So the easiest way to do that is just to select the first 16 stitches over the centre 16 stitches on the needle bed. So that's this one, this one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Miss two, select two. Miss four, select one, and miss one. And I usually bring it forward just slightly so I can see that that is a miss one and I don't include it in the next part of the repeat. 
So from this point, after selecting the first repeat of the pattern over the centre, all the all these stitches towards the left, going from left to right, sorry, um, you're going to select from this direction, from left to right. And then when you're going back this way, you're going to read the chart from right to left and select all the needles from right all the way to the left. Um, so you're getting the repeat centred correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue the repeat. So we've ended here. So we're just going to start all over again. So there's our miss one. I'm going to select the next one. Miss one, four, miss two, two. And then it's miss four, but because I've got no more stitches here, I'll just have two on the end and that's fine. But what I like to do is to bring the end needle forward on both sides before knitting this row, just to make the edge neat in in the uh, fair aisle. Um, because by bringing the end needle to deposition every row will create um, a chain of just one colour, the yarn knitted in feeder two. It will knit a very neat chain all the way up the edge and you won't have um, uneven edges. So that's um, the repeat continued on that side. And then because I'm going the opposite direction now from the center out to the left, I'm going to read, um, you see the chart started there where I centered it. Now going back this way, I'm going to read it from right to left. Okay. So now we, we can see there, we miss one, select one, miss four, select two, miss two, and then select four, which will be the last two there, because that's all I've got left. So that is my needle selection for that first row. Now we need to make sure we've got the yarn in the correct feeder. Our main yarn is in feeder one, which is what we want. The contrast will go in feeder two, which I'll thread up in just a minute. I'll put the lever here on the carriage to F. The side levers stay at the triangle mark, but these Russell levers need to go on one. Thread the yarn, the contrast yarn into feeder two and knit the first row. So hopefully you can see what's happened here. If I bring the needles forward slightly, you might be able to see better. So the blue that was in feeder two has knitted the needles that were in D position. And the main yarn, this um, grey colour here, beige, sort of taupe grey, whatever you want to call it, that was in feeder one has knitted the needles that were in B position. And that's basically all there is to it. I'm just going to put one of these bond clips on this bitter end here. It doesn't have any weight. And now that is basically all there is to it. We just continue on with the chart. Again, centering it on the... Um, needle bed so I'm just selecting needles here I won't bother explaining it again because it just makes it sound too confusing again I'm going to select that end needle do that every row I'm holding the chart here, but you may prefer to hold your hand back against the knitting. So as you bring these needles forward, it doesn't um, come forward with them. So now knit the, uh, the second row. And the same things happened again. All the stitches that were in B position knitted with the yarn that was in feeder one. All the needles I selected to D position are knitted with the yarn that's in feeder two. Now, just a thing to note, if you're using textured or hairy yarns, um, like natural fibers especially, um, you may find that if you don't, uh, because obviously as you're taking your time selecting the needles and things, um, it could, the yarn can get caught on the brushes, it can um, slacken up in the yarn nest. So 
I would advise if you're using hairy or textured yarns that every time you knit each row after you've selected the needles just pull back a little bit on the, the both the yarns so they don't get caught because you'll end up dropping stitches if you're not careful. So I'm going to make the next selection on this row here, the third row. Just so you can see the overall way of the carriage working, um, I'm going to cut out the parts where I select the needles and just show you the parts where I'm knitting the rows so you can see the pattern for me, just to save time of you watching me selecting needles. But you get the idea. So there is two repeats of the pattern. I'll knit a few rows and show you what we get. So I'm going to remove the yarn in feeder two and cut it. I'm going to return my Russell levers to two and put the lever back on the zero. Just knit a few rows in the main yarn. snap help the stitches align themselves there is our pattern and if we compare that to the one from pattern number 51 you can see where the pattern came from and there you go that is the Farrell carriage the FC6 for the LK140 and LK150 knitting machines. Hopefully you found this video interesting and uh, I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.